my work and say, what are you driving at, my friend? Sometimes the face looks like Apollo's, at others it has a trace of Lincoln's. There was no culture. You know, in Foon River, and I burned with shame and held my peace. And what could I do? All covered over and weighted down with Western soil, except aspire and pray for another birth in this world, with all of Spoon River rooted out of my soul. Not where the stairway turns in the dark. A hooded figure shriveled under a flowing cloak. Not yellow eyes in a room at night, staring out from a surface of cobweb gray. And not the flap of a condor ring. When the roar of life in your ears begins the sound heard never before. But on a sunny afternoon, afternoon by, by a country, country road. road, where purple ragweeds bloom along a straggling fence, and the field is gleaned, and the air is still. To see against the sunlight, Something black, like a blot with iris rim. That is the sign to eyes of second sight. And, and that's my soul. soul. Washington McNeely. Mary McNeely. Daniel McCumber. Georgine Sand Miner. <clears throat> Rich, honored by my fellow citizens. The father of many children, born of a noble mother, and all raised here in the great mansion house of the edge of town. Note the cedar tree on the lawn. I sent all the boys to Ann Arbor, all the girls to Rockford. The while, my life went on, getting more riches and honor resting under my cedar tree at evenings. The years went on. I sent the girls to Europe. I dowered them when married. I gave the boys money to start in business. And 
they were strong children, as promising as apples, before the fifth place shook. But John fled the country in disgrace. Jenny died in childbirth. I sat under my seat. Harry killed himself after a debauch. Susan was divorced. I sat under my seat. All was invalided from overstudy. Mary became a recluse at home for the love of a man. I sat under my cedar tree. All were gone or broken wing or devoured by life. I sat under my cedar tree. My mate, the mother of them, was taken. And I sat under my cedar tree till 90 years were old. Oh, maternal earth, which rocks the fallen leaf to sleep. Master Bly, to love is to find your own soul through the soul of the beloved one. When the beloved one withdraws itself from your soul, then you have lost your soul. It is written, I have a friend, but my sorrow has no friend. Hence my long years of solitude at the home of my father, trying to get myself back and to turn my sorrow into a supremer self. But there was my father with his sorrows, under the tree, a picture which sank into my heart at last, bringing infinite repose. Oh, you souls who have made life fragrant and white as two roses from Earth's dark soil. Eternal peace. I did. But Laura, my landlady's daughter, stole into my life somehow and won me away. And after some years, whom should I meet 
but Georgine Minor from Niles. A sprout of the free love voyeurist gardens that flourished before the war all over Ohio. Her dilettante lover had tired of her, and she turned to me for strength and solace. She was some kind of crying thing one takes in one's arms. And all at once, it slimes your face with its running nose. It voids its essence all over you, then bites your hand and springs away. And there you stand, bleeding and smelling to heaven. Why? Why, fair Euphemia, I was not worthy to kiss the hem of your robe. <laughs> my husband, who, by secret cruelty, never to be told, robbed me of my youth and my beauty, and at last, wrinkled and with yellow teeth, and with broken pride and shameful humility, I sank into the grave. shadows. The minutes wheeled like stars. She took the pity from my heart and made it into spiles. She was a hunk of sculptor's clay. In my secret thoughts were fingers they threw behind with pensive brow and they lined it deep with pain. They set the lips and they set the cheeks they drooped the eyes with sorrow. My soul had entered in the clay, fighting like seven devils. It was not mine. It was not hers. She held it, but its struggles modeled a face that she hated. 
and that I feared to see. I beat the windows, I shook the bolts, I hid me in a corner. And then she died. Haunted me. Haunted me for life. hours a day, 313 days for more than 20 years, saying yes sir and yes sir and thank you a thousand times a day, and all for $50 a month living in this stinking room in the Rattletrap commercial, and compelled to go to Sunday school and listen to the Reverend Abner Pete 104 <laughs> times a year for more than an hour at a time, because Thomas Rhodes ran the church as well as the store and the bank. So, while I was tying my necktie on that morning, <laughs> I uh, suddenly saw myself in the glass, my hair all gray, my face like a sodden pie, 
So I cursed and I cursed. So you damned old thing, you cowardly dog, you rotten pauper, you road slave. Till Roger Bauman thought that I was having a fight with someone, he looked in through the transom just in time to see me fall on the floor in a heap from a broken vein in my head. The sudden death of Eugene Carmen put me in line to be promoted to $50 a month. <laughs> and I told my wife and children that night. But it didn't come. And so I thought old Rhodes suspected me of stealing the blankets I took and sold on the side for money to pay a doctor's bill for my little girl. Then like a bold old Rhodes accused me and promised me mercy for my family's sake if I confessed. And so I confessed and begged him to keep it out of the papers. And I asked the editors, too. That night at home, the constable took me and every paper except the clarion wrote me up as a thief because old Rhodes was an advertiser and wanted to make an example of me. Oh, well. You know how the children cried and how my wife pitied and hated me. How I came to lie here. <coughs>
sat in a wheelchair half alive, her throat so paralyzed, when she swallowed the soup ran out of her mouth like a duck. <laughs> the gourmand yet, investing her incomes in mortgages, fretting all the time about no to pay the rent. On that day, I, I was sawing wood for her and reading Proudhon in between. I went into the house for a drink of water. And there she sat asleep in her chair. Proudhon lying on the table. And a bottle of chloroform on the book which he used sometimes for an aching tooth. I poured the bottle of chloroform in the handkerchief. And I held it to her nose till she died. <coughs> oh, Delia! Delia! said she died of heart failure. <laughs> I married Delia and I got the money. A joke on you, Spoon River? Lydia Puckett. <laughs> Nolte Hoheimer ran away to the war the day before Colonel Trenary swore out a warrant through Justice Arnett for stealing hogs. But that's not the reason he turned a soldier. He caught me running with Lucius Atherton. We quarreled, and I told him never to cross my path again. Then he stole the hogs and went off to the war. Back of every soldier is a woman. Hannah Armstrong.
will sleep beneath the sun.
our lives forever interlaced, sleeping on these gentle hills. We, your brothers and sisters, parents and children, merchants and buyers, clergy and congregation, masters and laborers, rich, poor, weak, strong, petty and generous, sinners all who seek forgiveness, who seek to forgive ourselves. Friends, let's to the fields. After a little walk, and by your pardon, I think I'll sleep. There is no sweeter thing, nor fate more blessed than to sleep. I am a dream out of blessed sleep. Let's walk and hear the lark. The secret of the stars. Gravitation. Gravitation. The secret of the earth. Layers of rock. The secret of the soil. To receive seed. seed. The secret of the seed. The germ. The secret of man. The sower. The secret of woman. The, the soil. My secret under a man. 